Hello, this is Nathan Webb. This is going to be a video on how to use the forward kinematic method of rigging an arm. And also I'm going to show how to use a blend shape so you can get your bicep to flex. This won't cover any finger or hand rigging. I have up here the Andy arm mesh. I'm going to use this as a basic arm. We'll put in some joints for the first step. I'll go up to skeleton joint tool. I'm going to look in the top view. I'll click once for the upper arm, once for the elbow, once for the wrist, and once for the end of the hand and hit enter. I'll name the joint shoulder or upper arm, elbow, wrist and end of hand. There we go. I'll skin the geometry to the joints next. I'm going to select my upper arm joint, shift select the mesh, go to skin, bind skin, smooth bind, go to the options and if you're just doing an arm the two max influences will be enough and hit apply. Let's take a look to see if that worked. Let's rotate our elbow, and yeah, it bends. Rotate your wrist around, and finally check your shoulder. Everything seems to be okay. We can go back to our bind pose just in case we didn't make our joints go back to their original position. We'll go to skin, go to bind pose. The next step will be to set up some controllers for the arm, I'm going to use NURB circles around each joint. I'm going to make them in the side view. Go to Create NURB's Primitive Circle and just draw one on the screen. And then I'm going to use the perspective mode and snap the circle to the joint. I'll hold down the D as in dog button. No, the V as in Victor button to snap the circle to the shoulder joint. That looks okay. I'm going to name that NURB circle shoulder control, CTRL, and I'm going to freeze the transformations. You always want to freeze the transformations of your object. Go to modify, freeze transformations. The next thing I'm going to do is duplicate the shoulder controller over to the elbow and the wrist. So I'll hit Control D, move it on over, and then hit the V button to snap it. Snap it to the joint. Take a look in pers perspective view to make sure it's actually on there. We're going to call this elbow control. And duplicate it one more time with Control D and move it down to the wrist. Hold down V as in Victor and snap it to the wrist joint. That looks good. You might want to scale it a little bit smaller. Let's make sure we freeze our transformations. Modify, freeze transformations, and modify, freeze transformations. These controllers are going to control the rotation of the shoulder and the elbow and the wrist joints. So we're going to use the orient constraint. You always pick the thing that's controlling first. So we'll pick the shoulder control and then control select the upper arm. Go to constrain orient. Go to the options. Make sure you have maintain offset turned on and hit apply. And we'll do that for each of the controllers. I'll pick the elbow control and then the elbow. Hit apply. And one last time, pick the wrist joint and the wrist and hit apply. Now we have orient constraints on all the joints. Let's give it a look. Let's name our wrist control, wrist control. There we go. If we rotate the elbow, ow, it looks like you break your elbow if you move your shoulder. That's because we have to, ooh, there's your wrist. We don't want that to happen. To fix that, 
the easiest way I know is to parent your elbow controller to your shoulder controller. So grab your elbow controller, grab your shoulder, hit the P button, or alternatively, you could go in the outliner and middle mouse drag the wrist controller to the elbow controller. Now when we rotate the shoulder, the arm goes along and looks nice. We can move the wrist and the wrist controller goes with it, or that was the elbow actually. And you can move the wrist by itself. So whoop, got to be careful about which way you flip your controls. Later on, we'll put rotation limits. So that's the basic FK control. The next step I'm going to do is make a blend shape so that when my elbow bends inward, my bicep will flex. I'm going to put rotation limits on the elbow controller so we don't accidentally bend our elbow the wrong way. I'll pick the controller, hit control A to go to the attribute editor. Make sure you're on the transform node for the elbow controller, not the actual shape. So we'll hit the leftmost tab here. Look on down to limit information and we're going to limit the rotation. We're not going to let the elbow rotate any in X. So we'll have the min and the max value be zero. If you hit these left or right arrow buttons, they put the current value over there. We're not going to let it rotate in Z either. So we'll make the min and max zero. And we're going to let it rotate in Y, but we only want it to rotate a certain degree. So the default is 45 and negative 45. That's not what we want. We don't want our elbow to bend backwards any unless you have a double jointed character. So I'm going to make the max value be zero. Type that in. Now we can't move our arm backwards. And then to bend your arm inward, maybe 110 degrees in negative rotation will work. There we go. That seems to be OK. We don't want the geometry to fold in on itself too much. So that's how to put rotation limits. Your shoulder is an orbital joint, so it can rotate around a lot. And your wrist can rotate quite a bit. You could put rotation limits on that as well, but I usually don't bother.